Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. In this session, we will learn about DBMS. This is the overview and the history of database management system. Let us start with brief history. In the 1950s, it was the era of manual systems. Data was stored as paper records. People used to write or print on papers and store them. This demanded a huge manpower to protect and arrange those records. If you want to search from these records, it would take extraordinary time and that will result in time wasting. And hence it was proving to be inefficient. From 1950s to early 1960s, the data processing was using magnetic tapes for storage, which provided only sequential access. Punch cards were used for inputs. Best example would be the Flintstones where the guy would punch his attendance. Then from late 1960s to 1970s, we were using hard disk to store our data. The hard disk allowed direct access to data and data could be stored in files. That was a better way of storing those. And this was also known as file processing system. The first database that was developed as internal program was by IBM and that was based on binary trees. The shape was like a tree and the relations were only limited between the parent and the child records. There were some benefits like less redundant data, independent data or data independence as you say, security and integrity which all led to efficient searches. And though there were some disadvantage also that was hard to manage because of absence of standards which made it harder even to handle those relationships. DBMS began around the time that the computers were getting popular. In the decade of 60s, the use of DBMS also began to grow in commercial sector. Mr. Beckman is a famous name in the world of DBMS or database management system. Charles Beckman was an industrial researcher and he began his career at Dow Chemical where he became the data processing manager in 1950s before leaving his work toward General Electric in 1960. The Evolution In 1960 we saw file based storage system as a predecessor of database where data was maintained in a flat file. Earlier punch card technology was used to store data later files but the files had no such advantage rather the several limitation which we will visit in the next slide here you can see a flat file example and this is a notepad file let us see the advantages and limitations advantages can be grouped as various access methods such as sequential indexed and random but there are several limitations first of all it requires extensive programming in third generation language such as COBOL basic then separation and isolation where each program maintains its own set of data and when users of one program they may not be aware of holding or blocking by the other programs that are being used somewhere else and that to by another user then there is duplication of data where some data is held by different programs thus with space and resources it also involved high maintenance costs such as ensuing data consistency and controlling access it also resulted in weaker security next to our list is hierarchical database in mid-1960s, Rockwell collaborated with IBM to create Information Management System, or IMS. In this model, files are related in a parent-child manner, with each file having at most one parent file. There are some advantages to this hierarchical database, such as efficient searching, less redundant data, data independence, and database security and integrity. Then there are some limitations as well, like complex implementation 
difficult to manage and lack of standards that can't easily handle many relationships and lacks structural independence. Then there we saw the coming of network data model. In 1960s, Charles Batchman developed the first DBMS at Honeywell that was called Integrated Data Store or IDS. It standardized in 1971 by CodeSL that is called Conference on Data System Languages. So in network data model, files are related as owners and members similar to the common network model except that the each member file can have one or more owner. Network data model identified the following three database components. First is network schema, which means database organization or structure, sub schema, which are views of database per user, then database management language, which can be at low level or procedural. And there are some advantages and disadvantages also for this model. First, let us see the advantages. Ability to handle more relationship types, ease of data access, data integrity, and data independence. The limitation to this DBMS type is that it was complex in design. The system complexity and difficulty in designing and maintaining was one of the main limitations for this database. Secondly, the lack of structural independence as data access method was navigational. Moving ahead is the relational DBMS. The relational database model was conceived by E. F. Cord in 1970. It can be defined using the two follows terminology. First is instance, where a table with rows or columns is defined. Second is schema, which specifies the structure that means the name of a relation, name and type of each column, other things as well. This model was based on the branches of mathematics called set theory and predicate logic. Moving towards to the next in our database list is object oriented database model. It supports the modeling and creation of data as object. An object oriented database system was developed as a database management system that supports the creation and modeling of a data as objects. Some of the main advantages of this type of database management system can be that it is efficient to manage large number of different data types. Objects with complex behaviors are easy to handle using inheritance and polymorphism etc. Some limitations would be switching an existing database to this type of database requires an entire change from scratch. An object oriented database management system is typically tied to a specific programming language and an API which will reduce its flexibility. Moving to our next database in the list is object relational database model. The object relational database spans the object and the relational concepts. An object relational database or object relational database management was developed as a database management system similar to the relational database through with an object oriented database which means again we are talking about objects, classes, subclasses and other things. Some of the advantages are that it has large storage capacity, high access speed, the limitations would be that the architecture of object relational model is not appropriate for web applications. Let us take a look towards chronology. In 1970, Ted Cott at IBM's San Jose lab proposed relational models. Two major projects were started and both were operational in late 1970s. In 1976, Peter Chen defined the entity or ER model. In 1980s, maturation of relational database technology, more relational based DBMS were developed and SQL standard was adopted by ISO and ANSI. In 1985, object oriented database management system was developed. 
In 1990s, the incorporation of object-oriented and relational DBMS was seen, where new application areas such as data warehousing and OLAP, web and internet, interest in text and multimedia, other things were taking up. This was the period when ERP and MRP were also coming into picture. In 1991, Microsoft brought us the Access, which was a personal DBMS created as element of Windows gradually supplanted towards all personal use. In 1995, first internet database application were developed. In 1997, XML applied to database processing which means it solved the long-standing database problems. Major vendors began to integrate XML into DBMS products. Move towards the overview. Database is a collection of related data and data is a collection of facts and figures that can be processed to produce information. Mostly data represents recordable facts. Data aids in producing information which is based on facts. For example, if we have data about salary given to employees, we can conclude about the highest and the average distributed salary. A database management system stores data in such a way that it becomes easier to retrieve, manipulate and produce information towards your screen anytime. Let us see about the characteristics. The first characteristic is that it inspires by the real world examples. That means it has the real world entity into it. For example, a school database may use students as an entity and their age as an attribute. A modern DBMS is more realistic and uses real world entities to design its architecture. It uses behavior and attributes too. Second is relation based tables. DBMS allows entities and relations among them to form tables. A user can understand the architecture of a database by just looking at the table names, which makes it easier to understand the database. The third is isolation of data and application. A database system is entirely different than its data. A database is an active entity whereas a data can be said to be passive, on which the database works and organizes. DBMS also stores metadata which is data about the data or data for the data. Next is less redundancy. The DBMS follows the rules of normalization. What is normalization? Normalization is mathematically rich and scientific process that reduces data redundancy which means it splits a relation when any of its attribute is having redundancy in the values. Then next is consistency. Consistency is a state where every relation in a database remains consistent. There exist methods and techniques which can detect the attempt of leaving database in inconsistent manner. A DBMS can provide greater consistency at compare to earlier forms of data storing application like file processing systems. Then in the characteristic is query language. DBMS is equipped with query language. Traditionally it was not possible where file processing system was used. This equipment of query language makes it more efficient to retrieve and manipulate data. A user can apply as many as different filtering options as required to retrieve a set of data. The characteristic that we are studying is asset properties, which normally is called as atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. The DBMS follows these concepts of asset. These concepts are applied on transactions which manipulate data in a database. These properties keep the database in a healthy manner. Then is multi-user and concurrent access. The DBMS supports multi-user environment and allows them to access and manipulate data in parallel. 
Though there are restrictions on transaction when users attempt to handle the same data item, but users are always unaware of them. These we are talking about the modern DBMS systems. Then there is multiple views. DBMS offers multiple views for different users. A user who is in sales department will have a different view of database than a person in the production department. This feature enables the user to have a concentrated view of database according to their own requirements. That means multiple views makes it more personalized DBMS for the viewer. Then it comes to security. Security is of paramount importance when it comes to DBMS. Features like multiple views offer security to some extents where users are unable to access data of other users and departments. DBMS offers method to impose con constraints while entering data in the database and retrieving the same at a later stage. DBMS offers many different levels of security features as well, which enables multiple users to have different views of different features. For example, a user in sales department cannot see the data that belongs to purchase department. This means it is user authorizations that we are talking about. In the next session, we will understand about the advantages of using DBMS, describing and storing data in DBMS. Whereas we will also go through a small comparison between file systems and DBMS. Thank you.